Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. As promised, I am reviewing The Haunting of Hill House, directed and adapted for Netflix by Mike Flanagan. Um, this one, right up front, I absolutely loved it. It was amazing, but I still, still like Midnight Mass better. It was a more succinct story, um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of... I, it's kind of strange to me because one of the main complaints about Midnight Mass was that there were too many monologues. There's just as many monologues in this one. Um, it is drawn out over ten episodes instead of the seven. That was Midnight Mass, I believe, The Haunting of Blind Manor, which we're starting next week. Hopefully I can get it done before Halloween. Um, but uh, that one is nine episodes They seem to be getting shorter. And it was just announced that Mike Flanagan is going to be uh, adapting a bunch of Edgar Allan Poe's work, which I'm super excited for. Um, and he's going to be calling it The Fall of, How Fall of the House of Usher. So, first off, I loved this... <laughs> I love that this, this series had nothing to do with the book. There were Easter eggs sprinkled throughout. We're going to talk about Easter eggs there here in just a second. But uh, uh, I love that there were Easter eggs sprinkled, uh, like the names of characters, so on and so forth. But for the most part, this is an original story. Um, I, I, of course, I'm not a fan of the book whatsoever, so I was a little tentative going in until people started telling me, hey, it has nothing to do with the book. And it doesn't. Uh, there are some aspects of the book that I liked that they didn't include, um, which is like gazing out a window at a certain thing and not being able to see it. But you should be able to see it if you were outside. That's probably one of the only parts I liked about the book. Um, but I don't, I don't gel, I don't jive with uh, Shirley Jackson's work either because I didn't like uh, We Have Always Lived in the Castle either. So it's whatever. Um, we all have our likes and dislikes, and she just doesn't. She's never done it for me. Anyways, about the show, um, this had some very, very poignant scenes. Um, a couple quotes I have uh, before I get into the Easter eggs is, the rest is just confetti. Um, that broke my heart. That scene, um, all, of the, all of the characters, all of the actors are fantastic, except for the actor who played Steve. Whenever Steve let his emotions out, and maybe it was, maybe it was on purpose, um, he seemed to overact. Uh, he couldn't quite... He, he didn't gain any sympathy whatsoever from me whenever he got upset. Not even when he viewed a certain person's body. It just... Steve really fell flat for me. Um, and he was kind of handled like the main character. Uh, I, anyways, Steve was the only character that I didn't fully jibe with. But that's, that's because I didn't care too much for the actor and his acting. That's just my opinion. Um, another notable thing is there is, I'm not going to tell you guys the, the episode because I was spoiled for it. It still scared the hell out of me. In fact, I said on Twitter, I screamed like a cat with its balls cut, a cotton in a vice, but there is a jump scare in this series that is absolutely, it's so, so effective. Um, you, it comes out of nowhere. There's no like lead up music or uh, music or anything like that. It just boom, it's there, and I shrieked. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. Now let's talk about some Easter eggs. I sh probably should have expected to see um, or hear or whatever uh, that it it seemed. Okay, there, there's at one point in time. Now this might be semi spoilery, so um, you've already heard my opinion. I'm not going to say too much else about the show, um, but I am going to talk about some some Easter eggs. Probably just the one because I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but if you're worried, you want to go in completely blind, definitely uh, definitely click away now. So minor spoilers in three, two, one. Spoilers. Uh, I made it rain rocks. Olivia um, mentions uh, somewhere about the midway point of the series that she made it rain rocks. Um, this is very, very clear uh, that he is referencing Carrie because in the book, and I believe in the absolutely horrible sci-fi adaptation of Carrie, that, that Carrie makes it rain rocks. There are also uh, other little nods to Stephen King throughout. Um, of course, the Shining was inspired by The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, so 
it, you can kind of see the full the full circle here, and I appreciated a lot of the references. Um, now, the, my final word here, because I want you guys to go in, if you're around here in the spoilery section, it's whatever, but uh, I, I want you guys to go in as blind as possible. It's This is one of those stories that I, I think is very important as far as grief, how families deal with grief, how families deal with the loss of a loved one, um, you know, and, and I'm not just saying blood family. It can be a group of people who have no blood relation whatsoever that you consider family. My friend Darren Kapoff, I consider him a brother. My friend T.C. Parker, I consider her a sister. Um, I love these two to death. My friend Nettie and her wife Jessica, I love them so much. They are family to me. And there's so many. Wayne Fenlon, so many of you out there I consider family. And you're more important to me than blood. I'm getting off on a tangent here, but... The importance of finding people or having people to rely on when your grief is the strongest and what and also the insidious rot rotting festering nature of grief if you if you hold on to it too long um, a big highlight to this one uh, that I probably should have put up front but was uh, Timothy Hutton uh, him and it's the kid that played Elliot. I can't remember his name. I just looked it up before I started this video. I apologize. Uh, but Timothy Hutton and the adult, the grown-up Elliot, uh, is uh, they the the way they portrayed each other. Because El I'm sorry, I'm just gonna call him Elliot. Um, Elliot, uh, the younger Hugh. I'll just say younger Hugh and older Hugh act the exact same, but they're played by different actors. I thought that was amazing. I was very, very happy with that. Uh, for the longest time, I was wondering why the Dudleys weren't being shown in the present day. And then when it got to the point of present day, I was like, oh, their makeup. That's why they're not showing them. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was bad. Um, especially for the uh, Horace, the husband. Uh, Clara's was... She, <laughs> Clara kind of looked like... You ever seen In the Mouth of Madness? Uh, when the the old the kids on the bicycle and then he turns into the old man that's what Clara looked like at the end, and it it didn't ruin the last episode for me but it did ruin the uh, the touching element of the end of their story, and uh, I I just really wished either they would have gotten older actors or just not done the makeup at all and not and not included the scene that's just my preference anyways because that scene was supposed to be super touching and it didn't because <laughs> I was I was chuckling. Uh, so was Dan, and so was Shell. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, um, but have you? This is. I guess that's where I'm gonna cut this off. I don't want this to be too long. Most of you have already seen this, so I'm just gonna go press on to the outro. Have you seen The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix? If you have, let me know if you loved it, hated it, felt mad about it. But if you felt any of those things, let me know why in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have any. You have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween, and I cannot stop giggling. giggling, giggling. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.